existing one is quite old, and I can promise you there is a lot of new things. And then I talk about the background, the objective, and the scope. I will talk about the uh, analytical method development section. Yes, it also has a development section. And I will talk about how to document documentation of analytical procedures, about validation of non compendial analytical procedures. Uh, these are the procedures, these are the uh, methods you develop by yourself. Uh, then we talk about the compendial analytical procedures using alternative analytical procedures, alternative to compendial methods. Uh, I mean, this is, there's a lot of information in this guidance, including uh, good recommendations on analytical method transfer. And I think the major difference to the old one is they talk about an integrated life cycle management. I will show you a couple of examples. And uh, this also would include uh, one of the later steps of this life cycle management would include a periodic review, which I hope be, at some point in time we can get rid of this time-based revalidation by having a better review. Uh, then I talk about post-marketing changes and FDA method verification verifications and also findings they made when they, when they look at this uh, submitted data. If you have any question, Ramesh mentioned it already, just put it in the Q&A section or put it on the, the chat, I guess it both will come first to Ramesh and he will forward to me. So I hope we have a good discussion later on at the end of this presentation. Uh, we also may be able to open the audio phone line, but this depends on how this uh, timing goes also. Okay, so uh, this is an uh, introduction about the agenda. I would like to inform you about another important point here. And this is a reference material which is available on the reference website. The link is shown here at the bottom of the slide. And if you double click on this here, I mean, you, you, have to, you will be asked to order to enter a user ID, which is audio, and it also will, uh, you will ask the password. Uh, this is AM4921, so this is, makes it very easy for you to go in. It's not so easy anymore if you miss a deadline, uh, July 31, and uh, because uh, the, the site will expire officially at that time. Uh, but in case uh, somebody would like to uh, will record, will listen to the recorded version, uh, I, can, I can upload the site for you. Just send me an email again to the same email address which I showed you. So what's on it? Uh, for those of you who are probably starting with the method validation, there is a 70-page primer on that uh, gives an overview on validation of analytical methods, transfer of analytical methods, validation of compendial methods, uh, but it's not specific to this new guidance document from the FDA, which we will talk about. And uh, then there is a checklist available for download validation of analytical methods, and this is especially in, in, in uh, according uh, to this new FDA guidance. So when you follow this, and to be very honest, uh, FDA guidance documents, they don't change too much anymore. I mean, opposite USB, USB chapters, they sometimes change. But FDA guidance, I think this will be very much the same. Uh, in the final version, if there will be a final version at all, uh, I will tell you later on why uh, there is some doubt about it. Nevertheless, there are also some SOPs, validation of analytical methods, verification of compendial methods, and there is also a very interesting USP stimuli article. It's called Life Cycle Management of Analytical Procedures, which is very much in line to what FDA is talking about, the section of life cycle management in the FDA guidance document. So with this, we go right into this uh, FDA guidance analytical method validation. And we start off with a question here on what is new about so the major differences between the current FDA and the new draft guidance, I think most important is the new chapter life cycle management of methods from design, development, validation, and continuous monitoring and improvements. This is very much in line with other guidelines, for example, ICH Q8 to Q11. The guidance has a chapter on method development with focus on the robustness testing. And very interesting is a statement in the new guide that it requires FDA submission of method development experiments if they support validation and this is concerned a couple of professionals in the industry. The guide does not have details on validation parameters, acceptance criteria, and test conditions, but it refers to ICHQ2. 
in line with other modern guises, it includes components of QBD, for example, it frequently mentions risk assessment. It includes quite detailed chapters on verification of compendial methods, uh, which sometimes is more detailed than the equivalent USP chapter 1226, and on method transfer also gives very good advices here. Finally, it has recommendations on equivalency testing for alternative methods also. So there is a lot of new things about, I mean, it's and uh, I mean, the reason why there are a lot of new things is, I mean, because there are a couple of, of guidelines and methodologies available today, and ICH Q2 uh, takes the methodology, and this must be followed in the United States and Europe. Also, the FDA guidance mentions ICH Q2, and it says, uh, despite of this new FDA guidance, ICH Q2 is still the reference, the global reference. Uh, and the industry better follows from a validation point of view, so is parameters, uh, because IDHQ2 in many countries in the world has the, has the effect of a, 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 a regulation. Okay, then we have this FDA guidance, I mean, needless to say, uh, but we also have some and other FDA guidance, bioanalytical method validation, and this one is available as a draft uh, since November 2013, so it's also relatively new. Okay, and then we have the famous the three chapters from the USP 1225 validation of compendial methods, verification of compendial methods, and transfer of analytical procedures. That's basically what it is here. Okay, here I have, uh, I start the uh, showing you a table of contents here, and let me say here, I mean, what is most important here, analytical method development, definitely, I mentioned it already, uh, the content of analytical procedures, I mean, they should include the principal scope, reagents, I mean, this is important, sample preparation, steps, and uh, I, will, I will talk about, how is it, about the documentation requirements, Reference standards and materials, there is a section on, which is also interesting, there is a section on method validation for NDA, ANDA, biologic license applications, and so on, and drug master files, and there is also a section on non-compendial and validation characteristics and compendial methods also. There is a section on statistical analysis and models, so I will talk about that a little bit later. Lifecycle management of analytical procedures. Revalidation is also covered here, but they, it's interesting, they don't talk about time-based revalidation, uh, regular revalidation, they more talk about event-based, which is, in my opinion, a very interesting observation, especially also knowing that they put more emphasis on time-based periodic review, then on time-based revalidation, which does not mean revalidation is not important. It's important for event-based, when we ever have an event that changes some important, uh, maybe instrumentation, parameters, uh, hardware, software, and also method parameters, and so on. So with this, we go to the scope of the guidance, and I think it's interesting. There is an existing guidance available. It has the same title. And uh, this new guidance will replace this at least one 